so I like Aorus. If you couldn't guess from the box in the background, most of my PC is made out of Aorus parts. However, sadly, recently one of my Aorus components died. My Aorus K7 keyboard over here, all of a sudden decided that half its keys are not gonna work. So now, sadly, its time has come. Or has it? And the worst part is, is that Aorus slash Gigabyte refused to cover it with any kind of warranty just because I got it for free from them instead of actually paying for it. And sadly, no matter how much you try to fight that warranty verdict, nothing came of it. So instead, let's try to repair it ourselves and maybe see what exactly is wrong with it. And in the process, maybe you learn a, a thing or two on how to maybe find out what's wrong with your misbehaving keyboard. So firstly, let's cover what exactly is wrong with it. Well, one day, if I wake up, I turn on my PC, I go to type something, and half the keys don't work. Just half the keys randomly don't work, so... So it's not much use if I only can type half the alphabet and can't even use the spacebar. So, here we are, with the corporate, plus a handy DMM that has undergone some, let's just say, uh... Let's just call it slab engineering. As you can see, I've already just unscrewed this keyboard, so we can have a look inside and see what is wrong. So, naturally, the first thing you kind of want to do is actually look if there's any physical damage. Anything burned, anything looking out of shape, any, I don't know, piece of leftover microwave meals that are just shorting something out, anything like that, just look around. And sadly, I can't see anything like that over here, so it's probably something else. So, one of the first things you want to see is if it's actually getting enough power. So, that's where the DMM comes in. The first thing you want to do is go up and connect your keyboard, make sure it has power, RGB is actually a great way of knowing that. Say what you want about RGB, but at least it tells you that your keyboard's getting power, so that's something. So, once you have it turned on, take your DMM and see if you're getting the 5 volts of power in the cable that the USB spec provides. Because if you're not getting it, it may just be that the keyboard isn't getting enough power, and then the fix is rather simple, you just replace the USB cable. Now, the pins need to touch depend on what USB spec your keyboard uses. So for example, we have a normal 6 spinner here, but you can find your specs online if you need to. So so now let's get a map of what keys don't work. So just simply go onto any keyboard tester website, get yourself a nice map going of what works and what doesn't, and in my case, we end up with this. So it's definitely far too random for something like PCB damage or something like that. So the next thing you're gonna do is grab yourself a paper clip, then short together the positive side of the resistor of any key, plus the grounding pin of the key, which is one of two pins that's next to each key, and it d differs from keyboard, so just check both. And if the key works, then up on the screen, your character should appear once you do that. So I quickly went and did that for the keys that didn't work, and the keys that did work, and none of the keys that didn't work actually triggered this way. So this is actually rather worrying because I'm kind of kind of out, out of ideas. So at this point you can try some other things like just again use your DMM, just poke around at random resistors, see if they all have power going to them. Like they all have power going to them, they're all active, the none, none of them are dead, even the ones next to supposedly dead keys so at this point only one real thing is likely for me and that is damage to the logic that will explain why so many random keys don't work all of a sudden because the logic itself is damaged or the micro or the controllers are damaged so you can like take a look at them see if there's anything off and now that i actually say it i have noticed that there is like a little a little a little silver blob on the microcontroller. The microcontroller is going to be the main chip, so it's going pretty obvious which one it is. So in this case, it's this chip over here. And there is like a little silver dot on it. Like, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be there. So could that be the reason? Mm hmm. Well, sadly, you can't really fix that. So I guess this video was for nothing. You know what? See ya. I'm, I'm retiring. I give up on life. Goodbye. So, okay, so I'm not leaving yet, but yeah, it does kind of look unfixable. I talked to people who are way more of an expert at this kind of thing. I also did some more testing and nerve it actually, and it just seems like it's unfixable. So it looks like I need a new keyboard. So let, why not make some views out of my misery? So I'll be starting a brand new series where I'll be looking into getting a new keyboard. Well, by series, I just mean two to three videos. With the next one, I'll be exploring what kind of alternatives there are 
and maybe deciding what I should go with. And probably the video after that will be me going over what exactly I picked up. So I guess subscribe so you know when those videos come out if you want to you know learn more about keyboards or just enjoy me whining about stuff. And if you want to help make the purchase a lesser burden on me, then I recommend checking out my Patreon, which is that down in the video description below. Even one dollar moment goes a long way in helping me make videos on way more interesting stuff and also way better quality videos and also allows me to actually buy keyboards so I'm not stuck without a keyboard. Plus down there is my Discord if you want to talk to me or about this video or anything else. So I guess that's really it for this video. If you enjoyed, remember to subscribe, like, whatever, and I'll see you all in the next. Goodbye everyone. Goodbye.